All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 24th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. And um, thinking about God's gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, trusts in him, should not perish but have eternal life simply by trusting in Christ. The Savior. I want to talk a little bit on the subject again of public religion, public Christianity. And let's go over to another scripture here. Second Timothy chapter one, starting at verse seven. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and and of love, and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel through the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and the grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Yes. Oh, the word suffering there is suffer together with, and it refers to, of course, uh, Paul as an apostle, and G- and Timothy was his uh, assistant. And the suffering that was involved there had to do with the hardships of, of doing that particular work, of traveling, um, being with, separated from family, being all the things that were involved, persecuted at times, uh, responsibilities. So that, that was kind of suffering he's referring to. Um, some people make suffering into a virtue. That's not the point there at all. So it's a, the, the Christianity, Christians are timid and fearful sometimes because we do not understand the gift of God in Christ. We think especially in the United States, we tend to think, well, there's all these religions, and they're all pretty much the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. For example, what's going on in in Israel right now with the genocide? That uh, Not that the Muslims aren't incapable of, that that they're capable of doing things like that, too. (sighs) But Israel is showing themselves for what they really are. What they're doing is not inconsistent with the Talmud. With the, it's been it's baked into their religion, the attitude toward non-Jews, whether they're Christians or Muslims or anybody else, is an attitude that is present uh, in the Talmud, in their teaching, in their doctrine, in their rabbis. They are Pharisees. They are the descendants of Pharisees, and. They, they look down at those who aren't Jews, seriously look down on it. You are a subhuman. Some will say, we, we've heard those expressions, you are a human animal. This is, this is an attitude that comes from the Talmud. It comes from Orthodox Judaism. It's not present in all people, but it's, it is in the Talmud. Uh, although in the Talmud it says you have to be careful that you do not bring reproach on the community by expressing this attitude at times. An example is given in there that if you find a, uh, this is an expression of the attitude that you'll find in the Talmud, that if you find a Gentile, a non-Jew, in a pet and he can't get out, 
and there's no one around, you're not to help him out. You're to leave him to die because that's, it's God's will that all the Gentiles die. So helping him to live is sinful. However, if it would become known that you left him there to die and hence bring reproach on the, and danger on the Jewish community, then it's all right to help him out. That is what is taught in the Talmud and many other things of like nature. That's not the only stuff that's taught in there, but that is taught in there. And that attitude is being expressed except uh, with Netanyahu and the, the radicals uh, at this point, for some reason, they're not worried about bringing destruction on the on Israel. It's almost an apocalyptic, the last great battle between light and darkness, or something like that. I don't know what they're doing, but they're bringing death on the on the on the nation of Israel. Is what they're doing. The whole world is turning against them, rightly so, because they're acting in blatant public genocide. Even Hitler tried to to hide what he was doing. These people are just openly doing this, and it's obvious that they're not uh, trying to destroy Hamas. They're trying to destroy the population in Gaza and the West Bank. They'll, and they've got plans to, to simply ethnically cleanse the entire land. They don't care what happens to others. If the whole rest of the world would die, they'd be happy. They believe that only Jews have the right to live. That they're a very small, have a very small view of God. The God of the Jews only. No, he's not. They don't care about what the, the scripture, they, they're not, they're not based in the Old Testament. They're not based in the prophets. They're based in the teaching of the rabbis. That's what Orthodox Judaism is. It's Phariseeism. Literally, that's what they are. They are descendants of the Pharisees. So you, we look. We need to understand Christianity compared to that. We w we would not possibly consider that. And what is bizarre is that many evangelicals and fundamentalists in the United States are are unconditionally supporting Israel because of a a wretched individual may, named John Darby. He was pretty wretched too. Uh, he had a very twisted view of Christianity. <clears throat> Uh, he was uh, very well. It was his way or the highway. It was John Darby, and not someone you want to follow. But any kind of any kind of doctrine that causes you to end up supporting genocide is not from God. Can't you see that? You've been misled. You've been wrongly instructed. Of course, the people, they would never think it would lead to this. But when you see this in your face, that it is aiding and abetting genocide, you need to get away from it and disassociate yourself with that doctrine. Disassociate yourself with, with endorsing Israel, this, 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 this Jewish Zionist project. These are not the people of God, nor do they represent all the Jews. There's many Jews that disavow this stuff, even in Israel. The, the ultra-Orthodox are being beaten publicly on the streets by the, the Jewish police, the thugs, because they do not accept the legitimacy of that government and what they're doing. They don't accept the Zionist project. So they're outcasts. Even though they were there, ultra-Orthodox were there before the state of Israel even came to be. Christians, we cannot support evil. And if you are supporting it, you are guilty with them. If your pastor is defending what Israel's doing, you need to not put the offering in the plate and rebuke them. Christians can't possibly endorse wickedness and evil. It is not of God. 
unless you've got an evil, twisted Christianity that has God being the author of all kinds of evil things. There are such things around. I mention them quite often. It's called Calvinism. Doesn't mean Calvinists all believe that, but it, at its core, it justifies wickedness. You can't do that. You can't do that. We cannot have the name of Christ associated with anything like that. Anything that justifies evil. And we have a president there that's fully, the United States government, not just a president, the Congress and the State Department and the United Representative to the United Nations. These are all fully, 100% in partnership with manifest genocide. We can't tolerate that. We must not have our names associated with that. We must disassociate ourselves from evil. Say, no, it's not of God. It is not of Christ. Christians do not do these things. Those who do these things, those who support it, are not of Christ. They are not following him, the shepherd. They are not his sheep. They are rogues. They are imposters. They do not have the love of God in their heart. Call Christians to repent. And if they will not repent, away with you. If you want a hold of that stuff, away with you. We don't recognize you as Christians because you are not abiding in Christ and his word and his love. Just like that phony preacher from once Westboro Baptist, the God hates you know what preacher. He was not a Christian. Manifestly so. We need to rebuke those people and say, you're not of Christ. Repent or change your name. Do not call yourself a Christian. We don't know you. Christ does not know you. You do not follow him. We should not tolerate public officials that do evil things and support this stuff. It's like the Republicans, the Democrats. You're funding this stuff. You're shipping, we are shipping bombs to them in order that they may murder people every single day. That's all done with American weapons, American aircraft, American bombs, American supply technology, and American dollars. We should cut them off completely, 100% from everything. It's the only Christian thing to do. Because we're bringing, the world thinks of America, America, America calls itself a Christian country. America is supposed to have more Christians in it than any other country in the world. Why are we engaged in genocide, full partners with genocide, with Israel, with this wicked people? They have manifested what they are. They have Netanyahu has 90% support in the Israeli public. They are unacceptable. They are a pariah state. And so is the United States now. Because it's doing evil all around the world. And as the neocons have established their global empire. With all these bases everywhere. We need to cut them off. We can do it. They can only do that with our permission. As Americans. We need to come out and shame them and expose them and demand the end of the American empire. As Christians, 
because they are murdering people all over this world. We have no business spreading anything but the gospel in this world. Democracy is not the gospel. We don't have democracy in the United States because the Congress and the president is owned by the Israeli lobby. And a whole lot of the rest of America is owned by people that don't are, have a divided loyalty. And their none of their loyalty is to Jesus Christ. Who do we represent? We represent Christ. Christ isn't about waging war around this world in injustice. We need to understand what we are and who we represent and not listen to the lies of those who claim to be in power. The only reason they have any power at all is because we lend it to them. Most Americans do not understand. We are not under a king or a dictator. Congress is not the authority. We are the authority. We only lend them our authority. For, uh, they serve as our servants. And we need to hold them accountable as servants. And if we want to call this a Christian nation... Well, then we need to act like a Christian nation. Christians do not do what our military does and our government does. They are not doing it in the name of Christ. We should not lend them support. We need to live lives that are consistent with the high calling of Jesus Christ. Who saved, saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. We are his people. If you call yourself a Christian, either live like a Christian or stop calling yourself a Christian. Decide this day whom you will serve. Will you serve and believe in the one who two, over 2,000 years ago was sent into this world by God our Father? who was born in humility, in a manger, because there's no room for him in the inn. The Son of God, who came to die on a cross for the sins of the entire world, for your sins, for my sins, for everyone's sins. Because it's the will of God that they, everyone be saved. But everyone's not saved because God has decreed that salvation is by his grace, his free gift, through faith in the one he sent as Savior, his own Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We should not be timid because or fearful because we have a faith that is higher than that is higher so far beyond any other religion in this world that is higher than the heavens are above the earth. There is no comparison between the gospel of Jesus Christ and any other religion. They are not even in the same category. No other faith gives eternal life as a free gift of God. None. They're all of works. All of them, including much that calls itself Christianity. It is of works, not of grace, through faith. What does God require? 
that you trust him. Trust in the one whom he has sent, our Savior, who is God himself, who became flesh, a man, that he might die on that cross for your sins and for my sins. And all he requires of is to believe him, to trust him. He does everything. All we have to do is trust him. There is nothing like that anywhere in this world. Islam is not even close. Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism. No, there's nothing like Christianity, true Christianity, in the world, anywhere. In the universe. There's no reason we need to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. There's no reason we need to be ashamed of being Christians unless we're not acting like Christians. Christ is coming soon, and he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to prepare us for his coming. We need to be about our Father's business. We need to be about our Lord Jesus Christ's business in the time we have left. Living as the light of the world. Pointing to him pointing the world to what is good and holy and pure and not participating in the works of darkness, but exposing them for what they truly are and explaining, educating the world so they understand what is evil and what is good, what is right and what is wrong. Because the world, the devil and the flesh are trying to obscure that. Much that is called Christianity is, is not Christianity, is not of Christ. People, the devil wants to blind people's eyes with lies, with deception. To keep them from the light, from seeing the light, for under, from understanding the light from understanding God's purpose in Jesus Christ, from understanding that it's a free gift. But it's in him, in Christ himself. And it's received by trusting in Christ himself and in nothing else, in him alone. We have limited time remaining to complete our purpose in this world, which is to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, to proclaim the gospel to a sinful world, to proclaim the light in the darkness. Because the light is coming, but judgment is coming. And when judgment comes, the day of grace will be over. We under, need to understand that. If people do not come now, it is like Noah and the ark. Noah was calling people to repentance. He was warning them of judgment to come, but they did not believe. And then the door was closed, and judgment fell. And then it was too late. We need to proclaim the gospel before it is too late.